Okay. I want to talk about Spider-Verse, I swear. Yeah, I, I do really too. Do. That's why we're here. Anyway, hey, hi, hello, what's up, everybody? <laughs> it's me, Chris, a.k.a. Time Labrito, along with... You can go in whatever Nate. you want. <laughs> a.k.a. And, and Leslie, a.k.a. Kamada Jones. <laughs> Best intro ever. Woo! Let's go. We've done worse. We've definitely done worse. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I've jokingly said it's your boy, and you were like, "Don't do that." I'm like, "I did it for fun. Uh, please don't." <laughs> uh, all right. Well, hey, welcome to. I didn't say space time taco, right? I just said it was us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're doing Spider Verse Time Taco. Spider Verse Time Taco. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just yes. all full on spoiler time for uh, across the Spider Verse. Um, which uh, I think we've all seen at least once. Um, Mm -hmm. I went to see it for the second time last night. Uh, I'm going to see it at least three more times. Um, So Nate and I have already talked about like our like kind of surface level opinions and feelings on the movie um, Mm -hmm. on this week's podcast. Check it out on all your podcast services and fun stuff. Um, So Leslie, before we dive into spoiler stuff, what'd you think? Um, masterpiece, amazing, groundbreaking, spectacular, perfect continuation. Literally, so excited to talk about it, especially in Spoiler Town because <laughs> I can't really talk about things not in Spoiler Town. <laughs> I think she just named the next Spider Man as well. <laughs> Spoiler Town. No, the the amazing, spectacular masterpiece, groundbreaking uh, Spider Man. Yes. Groundbreaking Spider Man. I loved it <laughs> so much. I went out of my way to not see any trailers for it, so I went in mostly blind. Mm-hmm. I knew what some of the characters looked like, mm-hmm. but that was about it. So from like second one, I was like, "This is the greatest thing I'll see." this year until barbie question mark we'll see it's been a fantastic year for movies for me personally (laughs) it has been pretty good yeah um yeah we both absolutely loved it we were both very excited i'm sure all three of us are very excited for the third part um oh yeah and we don't it's less than a year away as long as nothing gets pushed back knock on all the wood um you didn't know that was happening right what did you know there was going to be a third one? Oh, yeah. Okay, so, ooh, you have avoided things. Because of how I treat the internet, and I'm very much like, aggregate the news, retweet things, we can talk about it, weekly podcast kind of stuff. Um, they initially announced sequels. They announced that they were working on more movies within that universe, and then when they f- officially announced titles, they announced that, Across the Spider-Verse was going to be part one and two. It was originally just going to be Across the Spider-Verse one and two. And then, just like every other two-parter, they, they're they like, we're going to give them two separate names. Um, mm-hmm. So that's interesting that you didn't know it was a two-parter. Um, so, okay. Ooh. So since well, you... no. <laughs> Okay, to be fair, I didn't know it was a two-parter going really? into the movie either. What? I did not... Um, like Leslie, I well, not even like Leslie. I watched one trailer for the movie... And then stopped. I was like, at no point do I want do I want to know anything more about this movie. I already know who all the spider mm-hmm. peoples is. I don't need to know much more than that. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. Well, I guess I didn't ask you this on the podcast then, but both of you, mm-hmm. how do you feel about that? Because that has been one of the things that I've been very upset with about, or f- with a lot of reviews where they're coming out and saying, this was half a movie or and things like that. Um, because I know I think we touched on a little bit saying I was telling Nate about that um, in the fact that there are full arcs being told in the story it's not like nothing actually gets told or or wrapped up in any way Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah I guess that's interesting that neither of you knew that it was a two-parter going into it yeah I fucking screamed first of all I fucking screamed at the very end when it was like (laughs) But that when they revealed like that there was another one coming, I lost my mind because <laughs> I was like around the time like two thirds of the way through, I was like, I feel like we've had a full movie. Like, <laughs> how are they gonna wrap up what's happening now? Cause 
more shit is going down. And then when they ended it and they said another one was coming, I was like, this was amazing. This was a perfect, like, middle part. To me, it mm -hmm. felt like a mm -hmm. perfect continuation yeah. with opportunity for more. So it just made sense to me mm -hmm. with the way that it ended. But... Yeah, I have no complaints. So any but any criticisms of this movie, I will I won't accept. Mm. <laughs> well. You can tell me what they were, but I won't accept them. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I touched on it during during the podcast over the weekend, but um I mean my comparison to that was the Hobbit at the time and how the way that those last two movies in The Hobbit were split up felt undeserved. Because the second movie ends off on a note where you're like, okay, why did it end here? I don't understand why it would end at this point. Capitalism. Um, well, yes, but um, <laughs> the thing about Across the Spider-Verse is it ends on a note where it is leading into a whole nother part of the story. Mm-hmm where some things are set up and revealed, and so that to be continued is deserved. In such a cool way! There's so many questions now, and there's so many... Uh, I'm so glad that they are not making us wait a whole year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that reveal was bananas. Uh, oh, yeah. I just remember sitting in a theater when that popped out. I was, I was laughing at it. Um... And I'm laughing because I was laughing at the to be continued because in my mind, it's to me, it's like the perfect gotcha moment for people who didn't know there was a second movie. <laughs> um, I agree. <laughs> and also, I'm a bit of a sadist. Everyone who hated that to be continued. I was I was kind of just laughing at them. <laughs> uh, OK. <laughs> I thought it was a perfect way. Like you said, it just launches you into a whole nother movie. Yeah. I also don't think people who got mad at it realize like you've been sitting at this in this movie theater for about two hours, over two hours actually. Yeah, just over. Um, <laughs> do you really need this to continue further to a rushed conclusion? <laughs> yeah, no, that's why when he yeah, that's why when it was starting to launch into something else, mm -hmm. I was like, how wrap this up because <laughs> we're starting something new it feels like and which would I mean, need a whole nother arc and yeah so i'll yeah, put it this way the great. fucking the snyder cut of justice league is four hours no, long bring bring i'm up? just bringing it up because and i don't in people will Instagram praise the snyder cut ratio. but do you yes but do you really want to sit in a movie for four <laughs> hours <laughs> Uh, I can't do, and I, I, I haven't talked. I don't think I've talked about this on the podcast yet. I am having a harder time doing these long movies. Guardians was pushing it. Yeah. Um, like the fact that I made it through Batman and I didn't realize that that was a three-hour-long movie just blows my mind now. Because like now, if I go see a movie and it's like two and a half hours long, I'm like, could could they have cut like an oh, hour? Batman's good. Yeah, it's I could watch um, that again. <laughs> But no, yeah, I this was fantastic. I cannot wait for the next one. Um, the reveal at the end with the fact that we have, one, that Miles is not back on his main Earth. Um, Ooh, did you know it? Oh, when yeah. When he jumped out of the portal, did you know it? Because John didn't know it. And I was literally like, duh, his room's different. His mom's eyes are different. Like, he, My thing, like things also, are happening. The fact that, it very quickly, like, the way that the world, these worlds break down is whenever we go somewhere, it tells you this is the world. This is the name of this Earth, and it gives it, like, the Earth identification number. So we knew his Earth was 1610, or, yeah, 1610. Um, mm -hmm. When he does the scan, it pops up saying Earth 42. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, so it's one of those like, well, yeah, he's not home. <laughs> that's definitely not where he's supposed to be. <laughs> that's, that's one of the things I do love about the movie, though, is it doesn't treat its audience like a bunch of idiots. Yeah. Um, and if you have, it, 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 <clears throat> you can be surprised if you are like paying yeah. attention to a different part of the screen. <laughs> there he is. Well, it it drops those little things like showing you Earth forty two on the on the go home machine. Um, <clears throat> 
So that way, if you're paying attention, you pick up on that stuff. Like, oh, Miles is surprised. And that's the thing is, like, it doesn't treat you like an idiot. It just gradually leads you from the characters finding out that things aren't what you suspect they are. <laughs> yeah. To the point where it's like, okay, Miles realizes he's not on the right Earth. And then people who weren't paying attention finally get their reveal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and with that, the whole alternate universe, Miles, mm -hmm. uh, where he doesn't get bit, which, like, when he says something about this, but this universe was supposed to get bit at the end, mm -hmm. um, I'm like, I wonder if it straight up was just supposed to be Miles, because after seeing, I didn't notice it the first time, obviously, because I, I guess I wasn't expecting them to go that route, but when you get the background, like the uh, the spot is telling you this is what happened, this is how you became Spider-Man, and then I became Spider-Man. When he says he transported a spider from one Earth to this Earth, it looks like it's about to crawl up and bite alternate Miles. Because um, hmm. you see him from the back and he has the same hair as he does at the end of the movie. And it was one of those, like, I didn't notice it the first time because I wasn't looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I mean, it's it's nuts, and the movie is, I, I said this on the podcast as well, it's kind of one big meta-commentary for how Miles was both introduced and treated in comic books. Um, a lot of the Spider-Verse movies have been about correcting and polishing that narrative a bit. <laughs> um, to, and I mean, a lot of what Miles' character is doing in this movie is he's telling people that he deserves to be Spider Man, mm -hmm. no matter what I mean, they think. There's literally a whole subtle, not subtle discussion of canon, which I yeah. felt. I felt old, I'm not going to lie. The fact that they even <laughs> said an internet, such an internet word in that movie. <laughs> um, well. <laughs> I, I mean, know it's but, not an internet word, but it feels like one now. Yeah. But yeah, I, but I was like, the, oh. That's the meta narrative being used to create the narrative of this movie, right? Is like, if you take a superhero and you go, okay, the superhero is supposed to be these things. It's, they're supposed to go through this set of events. Um, they're supposed to have this set of specific powers. They're supposed to look a certain way. In Miles's case, even be a certain color <laughs> in some cases. Um this movie is very much saying let's trash that <laughs> um and kind of what you're rooting for by the third movie and hopefully what they do with the third movie is showing that miles has the power to sort of break that entire narrative that you can be you can be spider-man in a different way <laughs> well and i think even the end the, the end of the movie kind of hints at that to begin with with the mm -hmm. fact that um gwen's dad quits mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Like yes. Doesn't have the. I canon loved event. that. Ugh, yeah. I doesn't that have the so... canon event of the police captain dying. Um. He dies in another also... universe. <laughs> yeah, he dies. I love that another. because that was something mm. that I didn't really think about until I was driving away. Like we were driving away, and I was like. Gwen's dad's not the captain anymore. I wonder yeah. what that means. So yeah. Oh, well, just I mean, thinking. at the very least, it, it seemingly breaks that canon event. Again, we don't know what's coming up in the third movie, but it's also symbolic for Gwen's entire arc through the movie where she's got all this trauma from her dad basically just being a cop. Um, and he's so obsessed with that that he's ready to just straight up arrest her when she finds out that she is Spider-Gwen. Um, and this moment was important for her because it's like, oh, my dad actually cares more about my dad than just being a cop. Yeah. <laughs> so... That, the uh, the first time before she, mm -hmm. she leaves, um, like in the beginning, straight up in the beginning, um, that moment where they have the fight and he says something about, is she too punk rock to give her dad a hug? That mm -hmm. moment hit, like, both times just hit me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I also love the fact that, because it's obviously, <sighs> cop dads are not the everyone's favorite option as a parental mm -hmm. job choice. Um, but <laughs> the fact that she has that moment of saying, you put on that badge so someone, like, the wrong mm -hmm. person doesn't put it on or something like that. 
um, mm-hmm. basically saying, "Hey, you're one of you're one of the good cops." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of just the way that that works out with that storyline. I like that he mm-hmm. cares. He cares so much for her, and it shows that he's like, "No, I'm. You are more important. We are more important." Blah 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 blah, kind of stuff. Um, and I love how visually how that was represented. That whole Gwen is gorgeous. Yeah. The whole it's like the, watercolor. It's a watercolor. And it actually reminds me a lot of time it gave me colored comic book panels. Mm-hmm. If there was like a really artsy comic book, I could see frames or like pages. Mm-hmm. based on the colors especially when she like went over to hug him and then the the colors spread from her oh just yeah. gorgeous oh, my God. oh it was so lovely to look at and it was so overwhelming at times almost but i think that that was purposeful especially at the very end when they were having that moment and they were like going back and forth and his background would change and then hers would change and his would change oh and when she gets like just so when she's good. starting to yell and you see the world the basically the world almost melting behind her. Ah, uh, Dad. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I fell for Dad. <laughs> I I did. Uh, and yeah, I get cop dad is also yeah, it's like <laughs> uh, we could do better because Miles also has a cop dad. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. but like I've got a cop uncle like we've we've all got them we all got them. they all they, yeah. they all represent the black sheep a, of the family I mean, of, <laughs> yeah they all represent a type of like traditional archetype dad mm. provider type that's not too in touch with his emotions but i think both gwen's dad and miles's dad are pretty emotionally like engaged or want to be with their yeah. kids mm. which i think is really nice yeah yeah uh, oh man, I hate. I'm trying to figure because I don't want to go through the whole plot. Um, because mm-hmm. we don't. Yeah, have let's do it. I thought no. we were just gonna start. Want to do that? And work our way. That Gwen's band is dope. Yeah, I mean, I'm sad Mary she Jane's. walked away. I think it's fan. <laughs> I think it was so cool that they decided to go with a more rock based music soundtrack or background. That I felt that felt very purposeful since we mm-hmm. started from Gwen's point of view, and we kind of get her point of view throughout. I feel like they matched that on purpose. Everything was just so intentional, down to like all the details. Mm-hmm. I loved it. <laughs> I really hope her band comes back. I really do. <laughs> yes. You want to well, see a we'll performance see. of the Mary Janes? They were too cool not to return. For her to oh. just leave them. Oh. <laughs> the opening on her drum solo was was an excellent choice. Um and the fact that she's she's extending it so long that her band is like, Hey, can you can you like chill for a second? You good? <laughs> she's like, Nobody understands me. <laughs> um it's not a phase, mom, but um, <laughs> no, we, we open on that and we we quickly get introduced to this idea that Gwen has this ability now to, uh, through some discoveries, has the ability now to kind of hop universes. Um, and the the way that they did the spot, like, first of all, when we get introduced to the spot, Jesus. like, the initial trailer did make it seem like, okay, this is not the main villain of the movie, right? Like, we thought that uh, yeah, Spider-Man to, 2099 was going to be the main villain. <laughs> way to give us the most comedic possible character and then turn him into something terrifying turn him into a fucking eldritch god I in the span that. of a movie um, the way I, he animates okay. after after entering the um the collider was fucking there amazing he here's and, the thing though all through the movie i was like i know who that is with the mm-hmm. spot and i i guess voice everybody wise? huh voice wise yeah yeah <laughs> i love Love Jason Schwartzman. The voices. Oh, uh, we won't talk. We won't talk about it. But yeah, I was like, I love him. Yes, I'm so glad that that is who that is. I thought he was great. He was hilarious. I thought it was so funny and smart that they brought back the bagel. He the whole bagel thing and made oh an God, entire yeah. villain out of it. He's like... the bagel guy. <laughs> yes. oh, one of the He's funniest the random little things with a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> well it's doing it even better than in this case it's one of those random events that 
kind of comes off as hilarious, especially given what the spot turns into later on. Mm-hmm. Versus some nonsense like what Fast Ten did with Jason Momoa's character. We don't. No, we don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Um, but, so, but real quick, go yeah. thinking of the bagel. That's another thing. multiverse. Yeah. Um, speaking of the bagel thing, because when he gets hit in the original movie, if you don't know, he it says bagel above his head. Um, <laughs> in this, I love when Rio. Um, sorry, I don't want to use her first name. Miles's mom uh, snaps in the little mm-hmm. flag colors come up from her snap <laughs> I, I remember seeing that in a clip before the movie came out and i'm like that just little things like that are so fucking cool um mm-hmm. or like uh speaking of noticing you're in there in he's in the wrong world when he puts the hoodie jacket combo on and it's no longer a red hoodie it's it's a, mm-hmm. a purple hoodie yeah. um yeah just a little shit like that i love that shit Oh wait, mm. what he had a purple hoodie? Yeah, and when he when he's in the universe in Earth for on Earth forty two and he puts I'm that have jacket to over, again. it's a purple mm. hoodie instead of his regular red hoodie. So, I was so like focused on his mom because mm-hmm. as soon as she walked in the door, I was like, her eyes are super <laughs> green mm. and her hair is darker, and she was looking at him like what so she, she was my tell so i think i was so focused on her and the fact that his room looked different i wasn't even looking yeah mm-hmm. i'm going again so <laughs> i have to look at I that i want to time. see i want to see earth 42 miles in a different lighting um mm-hmm. i was asap rocky braids miles <laughs> uh, he uh so in in the comics um you get introduced to another earth's and i think it's 616 the main comic universe's Miles Morales, mm-hmm. um, who's a little older, but he doesn't look exactly like the Miles that like everybody has grown and known, grown to love and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Cause he, he, like the most noticeable thing is he is much lighter skin. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, the lighting in the end of the movie, I'm like, would they play with that? Would they go with that version of Miles? Because, like, you can't tell because it's mm-hmm. all in the dark the entire time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also want, I keep meaning to look up to see if I can find if it's a different mm-hmm. voice actor or if it's still Shameik Moore. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I have a theory that this Earth 42 Miles, who, you know, turns out to be the crowler of this universe, um, I, I have this idea because I don't believe, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, I. Uh, a lot of things escape my mind sometimes. Um, we don't ever see his dad at all. Who? His Earth dad? 42. Yeah, his dad's yeah. dead. His dad's dead. Okay, so his yeah, dad's yeah. dead. His dad's out of the picture. And I pick up on these things when talking because I code my speech a lot. But this Earth 42 Miles has a much thicker Puerto Rican accent. Yes, he was very, very heavy much. on that. Morales, I heard it too. Yeah. I think that's because he <laughs> has... I, so my theory was because he spent so much time with his mother, mm-hmm. but his dad's not there, or he's in a different area or something like that. Yes. But yeah, that could be. But yes, I'm so glad you picked up on that too, because I was going to say it, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. I was like, is that weird to say that I feel like his no. accent was a little different? But I, I think so too. I heard it too. I mean, yeah. I think his backstory is fairly obvious. Is okay. So, you know, his dad dies. He's out of the picture. This Miles Morales, of course, was never bitten by the spider that was meant for him. Um, this not only fucked up the canon of that entire universe, Earth-42, um, but he probably attached himself to Uncle Aaron Moore, who was already involved in a life of crime, and then eventually became this universe's prowler because he's just Miles yeah. and he's good at what he does. Bad Miles. <laughs> Miles. You know, now, <laughs> now that you say, I was going to say, thinking about that, because you were just saying that it's a canon event, somebody, mm-hmm. maybe not him, but somebody getting bit, that world Who's should have fallen apart. Spider-Man? Yeah. Well, that's the thing, is it should have fallen apart, and that's kind of one of the things that the third it's movie more on may the, Maybe use. it doesn't actually need to be canon. Yeah. Uh, maybe it doesn't need to be canon, but I think the movie's also hinting at the fact that I don't know why it seems to be this way. The Earth 42 Brooklyn is like all fucked up. And yeah, he's clearly <laughs> in Gotham City all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's uh... like, no, there are no superheroes. The The weird thing yeah. about the Spider-Verse in general or the, the Into the Spider-Verse canon, mm-hmm. I guess Earth 1610, 
I, mm-hmm. and I guess weirdly, maybe the other worlds too, because there's no mention of them. Who fucking knows? There aren't yeah. other superheroes. We don't hear about any of the other superheroes. Okay. Because um, I thought they were very much saying like the world needs a Spider-Man. <laughs> I mean, you do. I felt like it too. There was yeah. no Spider-Man, so um, they turned mm-hmm. into yeah. But that's why I'm like Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man not being in New York, that's one Spider-Man compared to if you, you can literally list like a hundred mm-hmm. different superheroes that are located, like their main base is New York. So yeah. um, it it, very, it makes it seem like it is, hey, this world, there is no, pretend that there are no other superheroes. Spider-Man is the superhero. Um, oh yeah, that was just my assumption. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love the, you hear, one, I love that J. Jonah Jameson is played by... Uh, jk simmons in every single universe um but also that you hear him talk about the sinister six cartel for earth 42 uh, mm. i'm hoping that that's not going to be like a big thing in the next movie i'm hoping it's just like a fun throwaway like haha look what happens when they're off on their own being evil uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh no, um but yeah there's a lot of stuff that that comes up in this movie plot wise i mean we get after Gwen, of course, comes back to visit Miles, it's not really like, hey, I'm visiting Miles. It's the spot is this anomaly that now shows up and he's got to be tracked. Um, and I love sort of the way they they play with this existential question. Like, what if a being that could create portals kicks itself into its own portal? <laughs> <laughs> and that's literally what happened. I mean, the spot kicks his own butt. Um, yep. And then heads out with the only character that I remember enjoying in the Venom universe. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But uh, he kicks himself in his own butt and falls into himself somehow. Um, But this gives him access to all of the potential portals he can make. And so now he becomes this, like, infinite multiversal being uh, who, by going to these other Earths and going to the Colliders, uh, gets even more powerful. Um, he's kind of like on a video game quest throughout the movie to get to these, to get to these colliders and just collect more power for himself. Um, and eventually comes out to be like this. He, he turns into your fucking sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> you, you know what? That's not that far off. Yeah. Uh, he reminds me kind of, um, oh, I can't remember the character's name, but he's like the nightmare representation in, uh, mm. Guardians oh, what the hell is the name of that movie? Rise of the Guardians? With, like, Santa mm. Claus and the Easter Bunny and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, one, great movie. Highly recommend it. Uh, <laughs> but, like, the, the character, the evil villain in that one is very, mm-hmm. like, you would wake up and this would be what would yeah, be staring at you. Yeah, he's ups- unsettling to look at. Yeah, well, he's supposed to be because they're kind of going for a whole cosmic he's horror theme with him. Slender manning me. <laughs> he uh, it reminds me of anti spirals from Gurren Lagann. That's what he looks like. Very sketchy. He looks in like appearance. What? What is that? There, there's these things called anti spirals at the end oh, of Gurren Lagann. Anti spirals. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that very like hand drawn, sketched out, doodled appearance where it's not like we're purposely trying to make a character. We just made somebody's being fit into a recognizable body (laughs) um and so so... he he comes off as terrifying at the end of the movie (laughs) i'm so glad you said doodles because i thought the first (laughs) mini boss that like paper bird was so cool oh my god yeah the way the da vinci vulture Vulture, yeah yeah. the way that they like played with multiple Mm -hmm medias at the same time i was like oh i remember when we used to do this (laughs) well that's your first on-screen hint that something is where it doesn't belong in the movies um that's and that's a fun thing in general Mm -hmm. the first movie you got the different look to some of the spider-men but they kind of still fit in the world the one that felt the most off obviously was uh noir because he was just a full black all the time um I love that we get to finally see the style and the look of all of these other worlds that they came mm-hmm. from. Because, um, like you said, with like we were talking about with Gwen, with how like painterly and, and watercolors and stuff going on in the background. Um, the look of, uh, oh, was it M- Mumbaton? Mumbat. Mumbat. Yeah, I can't remember it. Yeah. I love the look of that. 
I adored that Spider Man. <laughs> I love him so much. The fucking chai uh, tea joke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Or non bread. You're saying bread, bread. <laughs> I like that one. I like the traffic joke. Yes. Oh, I like the. This is where all. Well, this is where. Um, what was it? England stole of our stuff or something. Like yes, that? and yes. this is where England stole all our stuff. I love that he's good at everything. <laughs> and it's the Guggenheim still. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah. he's perfect. He's perfect at time management. He's just so good at everything. I love him. This is. Hey, what if Spider Man was actually good at balance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. I, I love him. He's cool because of the way he looks. He's also cool because of the way he fights. I'm still looking yes. for the name of this thing he uses, and I cannot find it. It's some oh, Indian yo yo toy. Yeah. It's, it's some like, like a, Indian yeah. yo yo thing. Yeah. Yo yo thing. I don't know what it's called. Uh, I bet you if you Googled Indian yo yo thing, Indian yo yo bracelets. Indian I tried Indian yo yo, and that did not come up with what I wanted bracelets. it to come up with, so. His bank oh, they are his, called. His... No, I'm joking. It'd be fucking hilarious if I just pulled it up. Didn't it? <laughs> it just says they're bangles. They're called one piece rhinestone bead and decor. <laughs> 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 no, I have no idea what they're called. Anyway, it's just really fucking cool that he uses that in conjunction yeah. with his webbing to fight. Um, and he just, he's such a cool character. I like the little elephant tusk on his mask and everything. Like, he's just so fucking cool looking. Um,. His redesign but, is fantastic because the original version mm -hmm. is kind of it's yeah. like a Spider-Man costume, but he's wearing the comfy pants. <laughs> no, um, but in that universe, that, that's sort of the second big plot beat of the movie is we get this action sequence where, you know, he's they're fighting villains and stuff in, in Moonbatten, um, and this is where we get introduced into this sort of the way they introduce the multiverse now, which is uh, Miles interrupts a canon event that happens in this universe. This police chief who is the father of this Spider-Man's girlfriend, which is fitting for <laughs> all of these other Spider-Man stories, um, is supposed to die saving a little girl. Um, and Miles, because he's there, swoops in and saves both of them at the same time. And this is very much not supposed to happen. Um, and so we get the appearance of sort of the rest of the spider, I guess, verse. Society. I don't know. Yeah, spider, spider society. Gang. Spider um, squad. <laughs> yeah, but we get the appearance of Miguel O'Hara, a.k.a. Spider-Man 2099, and him bringing in the spider society sort of repair this gaping hole that interrupting this canon event has caused in Moonbatten. Um, and then we get the whole expositional stuff of like, here's what happens when you interrupt these events. And we're in lucky. I was going to say, including mm -hmm. uh, when we, when Miles does go back to uh, mm -hmm. Spider Society, one, fucking very impressed by everything around him. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but also, uh, we get in that little explanation of hey this is these are the canon events don't fuck with canon world destroys itself he kind of shows off a little timeline and that timeline is very similar to a timeline that we see in the mcu yeah. um and i'm i there's part of me that does wonder if that was a thing that they kind of worked together with um, mm -hmm. because with this movie specifically it technically canonizes all of them into the same universe Yes. Um, because obviously the spot visits um, one Lego Spider Verse, which is nice, <laughs> um, but also visits the the Venom Verse or Venom mm. side of things. Uh, and in showing the canon events, also shows uh, original Sam Raimi Spider Man mm -hmm. content as well as the Amazing Spider Man stuff. Um, yep. And I mean, even earlier, we get the because it was in a trailer, and I'm, obviously you two were avoiding the trailers. Um, mm -hmm. We get when the actual line happens of Miguel yelling about Doctor Strange and that little nerd from Earth nineteen ninety nine ninety nine, mm -hmm. um, yeah, which is the right number. Stop calling it Earth six one six MCU. You're fucking up your own canon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I yes. know, Leslie. You can roll your eyes at me all you want. <laughs> I'm not rolling my eyes. Oh, I don't even like know you're... what that means. <laughs> Okay, so super nerd moment, real quick. Then, yeah, 
the main comic universe, like the ones that I read and we buy or whatever, mm. most of it, unless specifically separate, takes place in Earth six one six, which is considered the the comic state, the like the main comic universe. Um, at one point, it was stated, I believe, in the comics that the MCU universe was Earth nineteen ninety nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. then fucking MCU threw in a couple of jokes and mentions and most recently in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness when they're in I can't even remember what Earth fucking the they go into and everybody gets mm -hmm. killed um, they specifically call our MCU, our mainline MCU universe, Earth 616. And, like, the internet immediately was like, that's not right. <laughs> uh, more importantly, the actress that plays Kamala Khan was like, that's not right. Because <laughs> she's a huge comic nerd. Uh, <laughs> that's really it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I mean, we do get mentions of the other Earths, which does canonize it. We also get a nice little cameo. <laughs> um, during this trip as well, uh, Donald Glover shows up in the movie in Hell yeah. oh my live gosh. action and in a full Prowler costume. <laughs> so many nerds. I <laughs> When he came on the screen, I was like, he did it! He finally did it, everybody! Well, I went to go full see circle. him and he started <laughs> clapping when he showed up in the movie. And I'm like, you're the only one who's clapping, but I yelled, fuck yeah. Open yeah, night, I feel like open that was night, like, I yelled, fuck yeah. That was a um, real big, that was a moment for the nerd, the, a very specific nerd community. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and that's, that one, and I've told, talked to multiple people at this point about it, um, that one was awesome, and is one of my all-time favorite cameos for two, or like, two reasons. One, just the fact that he got to be in it again, and he got to be in the full Prowler, whether or not he ever actually gets mm -hmm. to do that in the main Spider-Man movies. Um, but the fact that by the end of this movie, we end up with, Hey, what if miles didn't become Spider-Man, but he came to the prowler, which is basically, mm -hmm. Hey, Donald Glover didn't get to play Spider-Man, but he got to play the prowler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, this is, I will say that this movie kind of pulls all over the place from comics, but in a good way. Um, I think the Spider-Verse originally was a thing like i don't know if it was created or just shown off originally in comics by madam web in the so yeah i comics. was about to say they specifically <laughs> call it the web of i believe life and destiny um mm -hmm. which is a big plot point of the earlier iterations of the spider-verse i believe at this mm -hmm. point that no longer matters yes. comics again are weird there's also a whole thing where they're like these people that are trying to kill all the spider people that are weird vampire people. Um, mm -hmm. That isn't my, my, uh, Miguel. Miguel is a whole other. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole other weirdness. Um, right. Miguel is Miguel is a very weird iteration of Spider Man. <laughs> um, oh, you mean um, twenty ninety nine Spider Spider Batman? That's what I was calling yeah. him. I, I, like I mean, he is. <laughs> He was giving me a lot of Bruce. Field, yeah. he, he is kind of Spider. <laughs> he is kind of Spider Batman in a way because he is a much darker, broodier version of Spider Man, even in the comics. But that's because he deals with so much stuff. I can see Kim in the background. Hi, Kim. Um, <laughs> that's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, he's a darker, broodier version, but he's also dealt with a lot of trauma. The reason he's so obsessed with these canon events and keeping these Spider Men together is he himself interrupted a canon event in another Miguel O'Hara's life, sort of took his place entirely, and that caused the collapse of an entire universe. Um, and so it was very, very not good for him. So he's, like, obsessed with this idea that he has. <laughs> Which, one, uh, come on, man, you fucking did that to yourself. Don't try and put that on every other Spider-Man. Thank you! Felt like he was taking it a little it too far. Who? Ready to I beat up a child over it. Have you, yeah. Have you seen any of the theories of people saying that they think that it wasn't some random person that killed that Earth's uh, Miguel? You think that he, he killed did it? his own. You his think own he version? did it? Yeah. Ooh, Spider Bruce. I don't know if, yeah, God, could you imagine? <laughs> um, 
I went back in time and killed my own parents so I could be Batman. Uh, (laughs) 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 That's some Bruce Wayne shit, though. Like, he comes to this conclusion that the world needs Batman and goes back in time and murders his own parents. He hates himself. He absolutely hates himself. I mean, have you guys seen, you probably haven't, the Teen Titans Go movie? No. So not in its entirety. The plot of the movie is they go back in time and stop all of them from being either born or having the event that causes them to be the superhero they are. And by the end of the movie, they realize that they have to exist. They have to make sure that the Justice League exists. So they have to go back and murder Bruce's parents. <laughs> No, uh-uh. Robin straight who up do- who kills does it? Robin goes back and kills Bruce's parents. Does she shoot shit. them? I can't remember. Um, it's off camera. Um, what a t- <laughs> I think the way they got rid of Aquaman too is that they put uh, a six. The one you know those little plastic six pack things that they put yeah. on soda. I think they put it around his neck. Um, <laughs> That movie was this, fucked up. I, if you movie? haven't watched, highly, I highly recommend watching that movie. That movie <laughs> made me like not ever hate on Teen Titans Go ever again. Uh, Teen Titans Go is very underrated. It was way ridiculous. funnier than people. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, uh, that movie, that, that show is ridiculous. I mean, they call themselves out for not being as like, you know, story mm. driven as the original series. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was very, I was very much one of those people that was like, "Fuck this show, it's no. not the real one." Yeah. And then when I eventually gave it a chance, I was like, "Oh, this they're unhinged." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are. It, it does become an unhinged episodes. kind of meta commentary by the yeah. end of the show. Well, I was gonna say, there's <laughs> multiple Why episodes unserious. that they like. Fo- they're just focusing on the fact that Raven has really nice legs, and I'm like, "What the fuck is this yes, show?" They are. So unserious. <laughs> their songs. Oh my gosh. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Miguel is like trauma dumping in the worst way, though. In this movie is. It's kind of like, what would you do with your trauma if you also had superpowers and access to, like, 22nd century technology? <laughs> Tw- um. Is that... It's 2099-22nd? Uh, it's no. right on the cusp. No, it's the end of the 21st century. You were right. Um. Boom. <laughs> oh, cool. I would never know that. Uh, that's yeah, fine. that's because they tried to teach you that dinosaurs didn't exist. Look, um, someone tried to tell me. No, the se- they didn't go that far. Oh, but someone tried to tell me the seventeen hundred, the seventeen hundreds, for the seventeenth century. And I'm like, okay, when did the zeroth century happen? Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we didn't. They didn't care to teach us. I that, still get so. confused about the whole ace it it the bc ad thing because like oh well that stuff is bullshit. That's not that's really used just anymore. We just have. Jesus. <laughs> we have before we have now have BCE and what is it? AC. I, I have um, anyway I have, before Common Era and after Common Era. That's what we use now. Oh, I have um, I have pre K. That's the only thing that I have. I describe <laughs> everything before I met Kim as pre K. <laughs> pre K. <laughs> that's oh, adorable. That's um, <laughs> in what? There, but is what's BC? Before oh, Chris. BC, BC is before Christopher. Yeah, it was yeah, like, so, hello, yeah. I knew that. <laughs> I'm like, I thought, well, I thought maybe it was the after term. I'm like, wait, what's the, the, I don't know. I'm stupid. And I am stupid. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. Hold on. You were talking about nope. me. Oh, I'm just. Hi, Kim. Kim, what did you think of the movie? It was good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they specifically said they didn't want to be on because they'd have to go in and do like all the. Uh, prep. Like, uh, we'd be back to doing uh, <laughs> our yeah, flag yeah. means death again. Yeah. Nate is well aware of five pages of pre-work. So non-prepared thoughts usually just turns into it, it was good. good. Yeah. Okay, bye. No, I mean... <laughs> I, I could also um, have written five uh, pages what? of notes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you should see the notes for the, the uh, our flag means death mm-hmm. special. Well... I will say, at this point in the movie, though, we are introduced to a lot more of the spider people. Um, some of them are mainliners for this movie. Some of them are background and not so much. Some of them are used to hilarious comedic effect, like uh, Ben O'Reilly Spider-Man. 
Ben <laughs> Riley, you motherfucker. Ben Riley. Ben Riley, oh, voiced nice. by voiced by Andy Samberg. Who Again, is another the perfect voice for that. Another character. voice that I was like, oh, they got Andy too. This is great. Um, as well I, yeah, as I, uh, I believe. Oh, now I need to double check it. Um, oh man. The spider, the Spider Man that's on the the horse back. I cannot remember mm-hmm. the, that horse guy's name the spider cowboy <laughs> yeah he is uh i believe that's the one that's voiced web by... slinger is yeah web slinger i believe he's voiced by um a third of lonely island um no the other one oh no 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 yorma plays uh tombs or yeah yorma was in it mm. too because I went back and watched a lot of Lonely Island when I got oh, home God. and looked up the voices because <laughs> I was like, "Damn!" He what played a, the voice of Tombs, which is, um, uh, you know, uh, the the Da Vinci vul- Vulture. Yeah, yeah, the oh yeah, yeah, the bird. Wait, was it Troy Baker who voiced him? No, that can't no, ah, right. uh, I can't find it now. I just I saw this and I was like, "Oh, that's fucking awesome!" Yeah, mm-hmm. that Why casting director now? deserves. An Oscar. <laughs> well, I mean, Ben Riley Spider Man is hilarious to me because he is the fact that he's narrating like everything he's doing. Um, I went back and looked at some panels of the Ben Riley era of Spider Man. Sorry, tear and kill him. Tear and um, kill him. Okay. If you don't remember him being on uh, SNL, I believe he was also at one point on the Amanda Show. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, he was the. Wait, was he the brother of somebody in one of those shows? I think it was I Carly. He played the brother. No, no, no. no. Uh, okay. He played Spalding in two episodes of the Amanda Show. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, so hilarious, dude. And I mean, like I said, Ben Riley, his character in this movie is him narrating like everything he's doing. If I go back and look at some of the old, like, Ben Riley Spider-Man panels, they are written kind of in that way. <laughs> um, where every little action the Spider-Man takes is kind of narrated at you. <laughs> um, oh my god, the store owner at the beginning when Spot, the guy that Spot is mm-hmm. trying to steal the ATM from, mm-hmm. is voiced by Ziggy Marley. <laughs> Yeah, he was a Caribbean store I, owner, I saw, and I, yeah, I, saw I kept hearing the thing. accent. And then when Miles says like, "How much are you for the beef patty?" I'm like, "It's a Caribbean bodega in New York." Like, <laughs> yeah, I saw his name in the credits. Yes, but um, yeah. So we get introduced to a bunch of them. Web Slinger is one. Ben Riley. We get introduced to Spider Rex as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, a lot of Spider Men, both past and present, show up. Uh, Peter B. Parker is back in here as well with uh jake mayday his baby um, jake, jake johnson i don't know why i say jack yes um mayday his baby who i guess also has spider powers because she like sticks to stuff when she calls oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like yeah it's kind of like uh superman when superman had kids yes. one of at least one of them had powers mm-hmm. she reminded me of jack J- <laughs> yeah jack, jack, yeah She's an um, anarchist. <laughs> But we also, she is an anarchist that leads us to, uh, yeah, I don't know if this is everybody else's favorite. Oh, one thousand percent, I think. I don't know. I've um, literally just been holding it in until you say his name, so I'm just going to wait. Because I was Bobby, ready to talk about him for an entire I, hour. Okay, Bobby I, motherfucking Brown. Literally the greatest, <laughs> greatest movie character, greatest character design <laughs> of all time. My inspiration, number one stand account. I love him so much. There's a reason why Gwen was wearing his shoes. I'm just saying, <laughs> Gwen, I'd understand if Miles just stayed a friend. I'm in love with him. Am I allowed to say Snow Bunny on the stream? God damn it. <laughs> <sighs> goodbye. Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Um, great Spider Verse Time Taco. I had fun. Oh, uh, <laughs> Nate. Do I have to edit that out? You might. I um... <laughs> might edit that out. <laughs> Anyway, one of the really fucking cool things about... First of all, I meant to correct you last night on the podcast, and I, di- I didn't want to, because I'm like, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure that's Hobie. Um, Hobie? Right? Yeah, Hobie. it's pronounced Hobie. Yeah. Um, Hobie Brown. Hobie Brown. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
So, cool rules for uh, for Hobie. I almost said Hobie too. Hobie uh, yeah, his name in is animation. Um, the way they animated him, body was on threes, which, okay, for, uh, do we know these terminologies in any way? I know them. Okay, so a majority I'm of the characters... I'm guessing that means his animation was slower. <laughs> yeah, it, basically. Um, so it's 24 frames per second. Every third frame, his body was animated. Um, they offset the vest, so it was on threes, but it was delayed by a frame or two. Uh, hmm. The guitar was animated on fours. Uh, and the oh, outline was animated on twos only when he's moving and it remains that it was supposed to remain static when he's held still uh, mm -hmm. and there's also always the cutout around the guitar um, yep. and the fun thing is they also said they were going to break the rules when they needed to <laughs> so was this all still done at 24 frames a second everything was still 24 frames a second holy shit the entire movie is done in 24 frames per second it took I believe they were reporting saying two to three years just to do Hobie. Well, yeah, I believe it. Yeah. You've got to sync up animations at different keyframes. <laughs> that's yeah. insane. Um, yeah. The, uh, and that's why I'm like the fact that this it's, it looks so fucking good. Um, Jesus. I'm just, cause now it, it, the thing I was reading off, he had, mm. it, it had been shared with just a clip of him. Um, yeah. Well, his stylization is perfect because, like I said on the podcast, he looks like he crawled out of an old punk newsprint zine. <laughs> yeah. Stole the show instantly. Everything about him was fantastic. Oh, my uh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Him and, and I love... Took his... Oh, my gosh. Oh, the, Go yeah, ahead. the reveal. Yeah. When he took his mask off and he was black. How... <laughs> like he should have been. I was screaming! Oh, I was so excited. You're not gonna make Daniel Kaluuya oh. voice a white guy. Come on. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know who anybody was. Oh, you didn't was. know? Oh, oh okay. yes. no! I uh, was always totally been black. blind. I the will... only thing I knew is that Spider Punk was black, and when Spider Punk came on, I was out. like, "Ooh." Uh, there's a newer six issue series. I think it's already probably been released as a trade, um, but. Uh, the current writer for Miles Morales uh, has a Spider Punk run, like it literally just a six issue run uh, that I would highly recommend checking out. Um, I totally will. Oh, that was yeah. he looks so cool. Um, I was gonna say something else about him too. Uh, oh, one, uh, I love how many people <laughs> I see saying that I can't wait to watch this movie with subtitles because I could barely understand anything he said because he they could because of his accent. Uh, mm -hmm. And I joked with Nate about the fact that, oh, man, I'm glad that I watched a lot of British television growing up because like, that <laughs> sounded normal to me. Yeah, I was uh, like, <laughs> Spice Girls, come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, even the fact was... when they, he used the, the slang for Clue mm -hmm. when he says Scooby-Doo. and Scooby -Doo! stuff in the bottom being like, this, no. here, let me explain this for you guys. Uh, <laughs> um, but also, so, yeah. during the scene when they are going, they are taking Miles to talk to... Um, Miguel for the first time, uh, him taking the little bits and pieces of tech throughout the entire walk. Mm -hmm. I, I like you just see him doing it the first the first time you see it, and then when Gwen gets his version of the um, the Spider Verse watch that allows you to yeah. travel without glitching, my mind is like, oh, he was building that with all the shit that he's just stealing from them. Yeah. Um, Oh, man, I, just everything about He's his character. In one step well, ahead of these lads, yeah. he knew. He knew he from knew. the beginning Miles was gonna be betrayed. He oh, knew. Well, He's telling him, he telling was... him what to do. He's like, "Hey, man, Paul." He, he told the baby, "Don't, <laughs> yeah, just pee on the establishment." <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the great thing about his character in general is like he's got, you know, the principles of a of a UK punk rocker and carries us to the point where he's out loud about it he doesn't hide anything about himself he just says what's on his mind and it's very much like tear down the establishment tear apart all order be an anarchist do what you want to do you know fuck what people are telling you and in that way he even serves as a mentor to miles mm -hmm. um which leads into the bigger action scene where miles is realizing like hey y'all want some fuck shit let me get out of here <laughs> um 
And of course, they they spring the trap on Miles, but then we get this whole battle sequence of him running through Spider Society and all these Spider Men chasing him down. Um, in that moment, of course, we get the the Spider Man point meme. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in C, every Spider Man in existence, including yes. like variants on variants, because it's yes. like, I think they said there's like uh, maybe a hundred named ones, and then beyond that, it's just variants of those ones. Oh yeah, and so we get a little a little funny moment there, but then we get this huge action sequence of Miles sort of running away from everyone and looking to escape this universe and go back home because he realizes, you know, I've got to try to save my dad basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, because his dad is going to be promoted from lieutenant to captain, and one of the canon events, of course, like we it's said, is days. a police captain close to Spider Man has to die. Um, and so. He's running pretty frantically, but the great thing about this whole scene is I can't touch on all the little action beats in it. They're all great, and really you have to see it in its entirety to get get the full experience. I cannot tell this to you. Um, but where we started in Into the Spider-Verse, where Miles is this very fledgling Spider-Man, learning how to control his powers and learning how to be Spider-Man, in this sequence we get Miles sort of unleashed. <laughs> um, he understands the extent of his powers and understands his capabilities so much more now. And we see him kind of on the level that like Tom Holland, the Spider-Man gets to in like Endgame, <laughs> uh, or even his latest movie. Uh, all these have something from home in them. Why uh, am I forgetting? The, uh, no way home. No, no way, way home. home. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we just get Spider-Man unleashed. Um, and it's great to see because Again, this movie very much is about showing that Miles deserves to be Spider-Man, and in this moment, we see him beat literally every other Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it was so good. And just him being able to be invisible all the time now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fully having grasp over like, his powers, following... yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like following uh, Gwen. I mm-hmm. thought that was really cool. Oh, Yes. I should also take it back to the beginning of this movie where you have the sequence between Gwen and Miles. Um, and if you're paying attention, you notice how Gwen moves. One of the key elements of her character design has always been the kind of ballet slippers she wears as part of her costume. Um, and so at the beginning of the movie, she moves like a dancer. <laughs> um, and you can see that pretty clearly if you know what to look for. Um you train Miles... ballet dancers, Nate? Are you no, I haven't. Things? No, I haven't trained ballet dancers. Um, <laughs> but you know what to look for, and you can see it if you've if you ever watched ballet or anything like that. Um, but then you get some. Every Spider-Man in this movie moves in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, Miles is more traditional Spider-Man, where he's very acrobatic and athletic in his movements. Oh my God, Miguel. What, uh, what is the quote from the the review from the spider the Miles Morales? Oh, I, I forgot. He moves with all the swagger of a young black man or something. Oh like yeah, that. <laughs> he moves all the swagger of a young black teenager. Um, I forgot yes. all about that. Oh, terrible, so terrible tough. line. Um, the exaggerated swagger. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, exaggerated. Um, oh jeez. Oh wow, that took me back. <laughs> It's funny because when I first heard that line, I watched in the video that was not that review. It was someone else doing a video essay on oh certain God. things, mm-hmm. and that's where I heard it. But um, no, he's much more athletic. He's much more traditional Spider-Man, where Miguel, as he's coming after him, Miguel is like... He's violent. Batman. Yeah, he's violent. He's like an animal, basically. Like, he's, he's gone feral. He's <laughs> Bat Wolverine. Wolverine Batman. That oh, was, wait. Yeah. That was That's... the moment when I was like, I feel like you're taking this a little too far. Uh, Batman you Wolverine was an amalgam lost comic. Yeah. The, <laughs> you seem to have lost the plot. And I thought it was really interesting that one of the adversaries of the movie was another Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Well, we knew that from the first trailer, which... I didn't watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, But yes, it is interesting to see Spider Man go up against each other because it's happened in comics so many times. You've Mm -hmm. had Spider Man fight each other for different reasons. uh, But to see the different ways that Spider Man go about fighting, where Miguel looks like he's out for blood, like he is ready to full on murder Miles if it means maintaining this canon event 
in his timeline. Um, and all Miles is trying to do is escape and go back home. Which, in all honesty... Oh no, I don't want to break apart a movie that I loved. Oh no. Um... <laughs> what? Miles this is, is Christmas a... light ball moment. Yeah, Miles is an anomaly. Miles is an anomaly according to everything that has been told to all these spider people. Um... Mm-hmm. Because he was not supposed to be bitten, which means he's not supposed to be a Spider-Man, which means none of the canon events that are supposed to be canon to him should be canon to him. So mm-hmm. his father dying isn't a canon event if he's an anomaly. Yeah. So this is, well, that's true. And that that actually kind of makes Miguel's motivations and his actions make more sense Broken. now. He wants to erase miles he wants miles gone from every timeline um and i mean there is no as far as i'm aware there's no repairing earth 42 at this point but as long as miles doesn't exist to miguel that means no more universes can be broken Mm -hmm. um i thought the same mm -hmm. thing about gwen's dad because Mm -hmm. that technically breaks canon too but it's not Like she prevented, well, she kind of prevented that. But well, because that one. So I what mean, does that mean? Yeah, that one, like we were talking about, is at the end. So that is more more fuel for her to be like, my dad quit. My dad's mm-hmm. not supposed to quit. My dad's supposed to die, according to this bullshit. Um, so that is another reason for her to be like, I'm going back out there. I need to go back out there, kind of thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, that I I'm mad that I wasn't thinking about that before. Um, <laughs> there was something else. Oh, never mind. It's just comic stuff. I was yeah. gonna say the whole him existing at one point uh, because comics are weird and they merge the universes. So Miles comes from the Ultimate Universe into the Mainline Universe. Um, they look into because of the fact that obviously there are parallels to all these characters in every universe. In every universe. Uh, like everyone shield spider-man all the avengers look into trying to find 616's miles morales Mm -hmm. and he just doesn't exist um yeah and like this that's one of those like you find out later he doesn't exist because he is a villain and he erased his (laughs) existence just so he Mm -hmm. could not be found um yeah so it ah and that's why i'm like i want to know how much they play with that kind of stuff with (laughs) 42 in the fact that he is mm-hmm. obviously super villain level of bad guy. Yeah. Um, oh, I'll just say the, the scene. <laughs> so the whole creep up of earth 42 is brilliantly done because you, if you're paying attention again, you notice the scanner give earth 42 and you know, that's not this miles's original universe. Right. Mm-hmm. So he's being sent somewhere else, but miles himself, that doesn't set in onto him until he starts not only just having a conversation with his mom and realizing that events that he believes are supposed to take place aren't taking place. And then he meets uncle Aaron, who's alive. And because he's so wrapped up in his emotions at this point where he's just happy to see uncle Aaron again, he doesn't really care about this, about how messed up that actually is. Um, And then realizes Aaron is saying things to him like, hey, you took your braids out and so on and so forth. These things don't make any sense because to this Miles, he never fucking braided his hair. (laughs) Um, And then starts talking about this. His mom says to him, too. Yeah, his mom says something about his hair, too. Yeah, about his hair, too. Yes. And then when they're going up the stairs out of the apartment, uh, Aaron's going over this supposed plan. um, And Miles just kind of has to go along with it to find out what's really happening here. Until, of course, he gets knocked out and then taken back to Aaron's apartment. Um, the music choice in the scene is perfect, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah. But then when Aaron puts on the glove and Miles thinks he's a prowler, the scene where Aaron punches the punching bag and in you get the this splatter explosion. effect, I was... It lasted for a second, but holy shit, I was about to, about to lose my fucking shit in the theater. <laughs> 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 well, you thought they straight up just murdered Miles? I don't think they murdered him, but I I thought like Aaron like actually fucking hit his <laughs> neck. He punched the fuck out of him. I did too. I'm like Aaron, like fucking just 
folded his nephew like an omelet. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Knocked him into but... another spider verse. <laughs> But no, he didn't punch him. And then, of course, we get the big reveal towards the end of the movie that there is an Earth 42 miles and he has now become the Prowler. Literally coolest reveal in the history of movies of all time. I was yeah. fucking screaming. That was oh, yes. so cool on so many levels and to be the culmination of all of what we've seen so far. Because if, mm-hmm. if you were paying attention even earlier when spider bite says or somebody says it takes you back to the the yeah. universe where your dna comes from even if you like you said even if you weren't paying attention to that before when miles thinks that everybody in the audience was like oh shit oh she did say that <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and then I everyone's the- like damn i love that <laughs> we even all- um even Gwen has that realization too. Like the cut, mm-hmm. he has the realization and yeah. she's like, oh shit. Um, yeah. Cause she's at his house. Oh my God. And then his, her coming out, his parents being there, that whole dynamic and interaction was so funny. <clears throat> I think his parents reacted well, given the circumstances that a girl yeah. just walked out of his room, <laughs> his room and he's not there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we get this, this unveiling that there is is a miles on earth 42 he is the prowler he comes off as completely sinister from the get-go like our miles is shocked to see himself in another universe this miles is still putting on that that sort of criminal facade where he's like homie i don't give a fuck who you are you're in the wrong place yeah he <laughs> um, says something about my dad's alive or our dad is alive and he says you're mm-hmm. dad yeah very much like he's mm. he's very much like that that must be cool that your dad's alive <laughs> um because you can you can sort of get in that moment that this miles is still part of the, the big part of the reason he's become the prowler is because of that trauma of his dad dying um and that maybe he wants to take that from this universe's miles unless um, he killed his dad everybody's killing everybody in this movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> But uh, at the end of it all, Gwen, you know, rallies the posse of, I guess you could call our our better Spider-Men together and sort of leads them on this crusade to rescue Miles. And then we get our big to-be-continued splash. <laughs> so of her party, the fact that she, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you have the, the three original side characters from the last one with Noir, uh, Spider-Ham, Spider-Ham, yeah. And, yeah, um, Spider Ham and Peter B. And well, I was gonna say, and uh, mm-hmm. and Penny, Penny, um, Penny. who Penny yeah. of those three is the only one that has a new line in the movie. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, Peter B. That's who she goes to last to kind of get her get him in there. Um, I love the fact that Spider Bite is there too. Um, because mm-hmm. like you have obviously you have uh, Pavi. Javi? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Hobie. And then it's like, because you would think, oh, okay, cool. The fact that she came along with the, with them, because that like earlier on they have that moment together. I love that he his way of kind of trying to be come off cool is like, I'm, I'm Spider-Man. And she's just like, yeah, all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Like, um, where do you think you walked into? Like, yeah, this isn't, <laughs> hey, it might be Spider Society. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and speaking of it, just on Spider Bite in general, I love the idea of a uh, an avatar. She's not actually out there doing things. Me too. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the way that she uses webs instead. Of, it's just like elastic arm kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works in the real world because she is an avatar, mm-hmm. but she has a physical body to these people. And a VR headset eating oh, Cheetos. That, yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, it's more <laughs> of the fact that like, so is and I guess I don't know much about her character. I'm like, does her character basically pilot 
is she in a world and she is protecting another world with her avatar kind of thing? Because I've never actually looked into her. Oh, like, enough. what's the deal with her, like, yeah. crime fighting? Yeah, that's a good point. I guess, yeah, she would be, Cause she like, sitting at home. she herself doesn't have powers. Um, and by the way, that mm-hmm. character was voiced by, um, is it Amandla? It was Amandla, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I still have I still have not seen bodies, bodies, bodies. Don't mm-hmm. cast. Yeah, this cast. Is well, crazy. you know my arch nemesis is in it, so. I I'm <laughs> telling you, you you are just you need to to watch the right stuff. He's not that bad. Mm. I don't know. I mean, but yeah, and I'm glad that the old ones are coming back. I thought that mm-hmm. was a great. That's gonna oh, all of them together. Oh. I think it's nice I'm that they, they gave the space to introduce and make us fall in love with other characters. Um, mm-hmm. Like, fucking immediately, too. Because, uh, <laughs> like, even no. it, even of the other three, I'm like, okay, Noir is entertaining. Penny is is uh, nice idea. Um, obviously, she moved on and has a new robot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel in a way about that? <laughs> uh, weirdly enough, uh, that robot, her new robot, I think actually follows the design of the, her more recent um robot in the comics um mm-hmm. which i actually really like that they did that um oh, i forgot about oh, the little spider, moment spider, we spider. get with sun spider with yay what? so sun spider is the one in the wheelchair oh yeah the crutch joke <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. oh my gosh no sun spider is i believe still the only spider person with a disability um but she's got like some degenerative disease that affects her connective tissues. But the cool thing about her web slingers is she actually does use her crutches as her web slingers. <laughs> I think she's a recent addition too. She just got she is this last year. Fairly recent. Yeah, um, Spider Verse Volume Three Number Six. Yep. No, but I, I I can gush about all the Spider Men who showed up all day. I'm still waiting to see more. I'm hoping we see. A spiderling i'm hoping we see a spinneret but so yeah okay i was gonna say do we do we all have i don't know how much how many random spiders you know leslie but do we have any like hopefuls for the next movie a silence falls upon us all not really i mean well i also wasn't i'm not a spider versed <laughs> <laughs> And now we're done. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh... Put the rim shot in here. <laughs> um, the only one that I can think of that I've read that I didn't see was Silk. That Silk. yes, Silk was a surprise that we didn't see Silk. But I wonder mm-hmm. if that's because Silk is a. I think Sony is planning on doing a Silk movie separately, like a solo Silk movie. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, they're working on a fucking adding more to the weirdness of Spider Verse. Um, Spider. The, Sony is working on a Madam Web standalone film, which okay, that's a whole other like. That's hey, this is one of the most important movie. people to the original Spider Verse story. Um, yeah. So for me, I think there's three. Uh, Spider Man, which is the Japanese Spider Man from the <laughs> the '70s show. Um, Oh, my mind just blanked. I had the I was just thinking about this the other day. Um, <laughs> oh, Spider's Man, which is oh God, not <laughs> Spider's Man. <laughs> what? Who is Spider's Man? Uh, Spider's Man is a group of spiders that go out and fight crime as Spider Man. It is not no. Peter do, they be, do they do they morph into a, a man? Suit, it is a suit filled with with thousands of spiders. <laughs> That sounds horrifying. I don't want to see Spiders Man. Spiders Man. Yeah. Um, That's so funny. Yeah. It's <laughs> Peter Parker's once a promising young student. Blah 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 blah. One of the experience experiments observed was a massive colony of spiders. Blah 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 blah. Basically, Peter falls into the colony, gets devoured, and then takes over them as a hive mind. Um, yeah. And then, That's last but not least, boy. most importantly, in who I would love just to see in any form and be maybe possibly be like a tv show or something um 
I Want Superior Spider-Man, which, if you don't know, is the storyline where Doc Ock was dying, transferred his mind into Peter Parker's body, and then took over as Peter Parker uh, up until the most recent series, technically. Um, mm-hmm. Or more recent series. Yeah, Where did Peter go? Peter's mind was in his dying body. I Peter's think. mother went into Dr. Octavius' dying body yeah. and died um, with there him. Was, it was, no, no, it did not die with him. Um, no. It's okay. weird. You're uh, It was still in there, too, in his mind, What? Too. Yes. Um, what? Add it to the list. Read the run of Superior Spider-Man. It is one of the few. That's of course, it wasn't actually dark. Peter Parker. So. <laughs> well, he like he lives his life as Peter, falls in love with some other character that didn't ex- like wasn't really in Peter's life. Um, started a whole company, got his way through college, but got his this way through college like by plagiarizing fiction. his own his old work like what he used to get through the college which mm. didn't come into play until after doc ock was gone and then peter had to face the consequences of that and had to go back to college again that's <laughs> he lost funny. his company lost his degree he lost everything and had to start back from uh square one it was great mm-hmm. uh that's the the run i have all of it was the amazing spider-man when they went back to number one well, it would be a whole separate movie, but I'd love to see something on the Inheritors eventually. Those are the vampire people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are currently in Spider-Man, uh, the Spider-Man oh, really? room. Uh, More Goal or whatever the fuck that guy's name is. Mm-hmm. Um, he, It's weird. They're the good guys right now. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Nate, you understand that that makes no fucking sense. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the, like the fact that superior, not superior, uh, spectacular Spider-Man, um, the animated guy. Well, I mean, they're all fucking animated. Um, but the little short one that comes out and speaks to Miles, the fact mm-hmm. that they gave him a little role like that, I'm like, I have more faith. Not not faith, but like. It's more like they could give anybody just a one-off like, hey, this voice actor wanted to come back. This actor wanted to come back. Mm-hmm. What are the odds that we get real Tom Holland in this move, in this next movie? Um, it's high considering next. the other two. Yeah. The only Spider-Man that I don't know that they would include is the MTV Neil Patrick Harris Spider-Man You've that only it? I seem to have watched. Oh, no. that, that show I love that I love show. <laughs> That that's that, on that no. list of like when CG cartoons were still horrible. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so blocky, it looked like reboot. <laughs> I loved it, but uh, yeah, if if they happen to just give us that old school CGI looking Neil Patrick Harris Spider Man, yeah. then they've literally given every like that's the last <laughs> Spider Man. In existence. I'm surprised. They I am actually everyone. surprised they didn't at least throw him in as like a background character. Um, mm-hmm. For now. Yeah. Because I mean, hell, we got, they brought back the 60 version again. Um, they brought back, or they put in, not Superior. Um, oh, fuck. There's too, there's too many fucking Spider-Men. Uh- <laughs> there's so many. I felt that. So, the, so many. I felt that the eternal, um, montage of dying uncle ben's was a oh little my God. unnecessary yeah oh, oh you know what we've talked about all those uncle ben Spider-Men. dying into infinity we we didn't talk about um jess the spider woman in this oh, yeah, movie I was just waiting. oh yeah oh you were waiting okay she better she better have that baby in the third one you better get my <laughs> second spider baby there you go in the third one I'm ho- I amazing. really hope she she does the turn. I hope she realizes what she's siding with mm-hmm. is definitely not. Uh, I could tell she regretted it, but she I could also tell like she doesn't really owe Gwen yeah. as much. Like she doesn't know her as well. She mm-hmm. doesn't really owe her as much. So I got it, but I also understood Gwen perfectly when she saw her and was like, "Will you be my mother?" <laughs> I was like, "Same." <laughs> you, you, you adopt me? What? <laughs> you miss you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Exactly. So I get it. <laughs> oh my god! No, um, no. I mean, overall, this movie again is is fantastic in everything that it does. She's amazing. Um, 
I guess the the big question that that everyone has every movie reviewer I've watched so far has been trying to answer for themselves and for their audience is was this better than Into the Spider Verse? Chris, do you think this was better than well, Into the Spider Verse? I think we've said it in the podcast. Um, mm-hmm. I personally, it, this is right under the original one for mm-hmm. me. But that is because, and I didn't get that. I haven't asked Leslie this yet. One of the things that clicked with me in that first movie so much was the music. Um, mm-hmm. And like this music is still good. And even after seeing it a second time, I still feel that the music was good. But the first se- the first movie like those songs still just randomly pop into my head and i can't think of any of the songs from this movie um besides like that that ending reveal moment or that ending conversation that he has with uncle aaron um in in on top of that it's paired it's the music paired with while this movie attempt not attempts this movie is very close to having similar level of impactful moments nothing in this movie is the same level as the what's up danger scene to me. Mm. Um, Just, I mean, visually everything about, I fucking love this movie. And I will, again, like I said, I'm going to see it so many more times in theaters and I'm going to buy it and I'm going to have it just randomly running. Um, But the, the what's up danger scene is a scene that literally I have just thrown up and had that play just because I'm like, I want to watch it again. I want to see that. (laughs) I want to see him rising um, instead of falling again and all that shit. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it, it it is not anything against this movie. This movie is fucking incredible, but that, that is the only reason it is like just underneath the first one for me. Mm. Okay. Well, Leslie, what do you think between the two movies? Which one is better in your opinion? refuse to do that i feel like they're side i feel like they're side by side the only reason i would give spider the first one the 0.5 uptick is because it was such a game changer and it was the first one Mm -hmm. i also agree with chris that i think that the music was more impactful but my tinfoil hat theory about that is because we were looking at it from miles's point of view Mm -hmm. and music is such a bigger part of his daily life and we were following him in the first one. In the second one, we start with Gwen's point of view, but she quits music very early on. I also think that that's my tinfoil hat theory about why the music wasn't as prevalent. But I also think that this movie was more about the visuals mm-hmm. overall than the last one. I think the first movie was had more style, but this one was more stylistic in mm-hmm. the way that it was presented. And I think that... The impact was more so in how it looked mm. than what it sounded like. But I agree with you on, like, the music was more memorable. But I feel like that was intentional because yeah. <laughs> I put on a tinfoil hat <laughs> and everything about this. And it was such a, it was such a continuous. A, such a perfect continuation. Everything made sense. All the decisions made sense. The fact that it was a slightly different point of view when we were following Gwen this time was mm-hmm. so smart. You didn't see Miles for the first like 15 minutes or something like that. Mm-hmm. He like wasn't present for the beginning. Yeah. I thought that was so cool that it's a continuation of his story, but it wasn't about him. And it was just mm-hmm. such a bigger it turned it, it turned everything into something bigger that's just gonna culminate to the third one because we have a fucking third one and i had no idea like i, love I was that. fucking screaming I'm, i was that is so, so awesome excited. for you too, too. <laughs> like i was so i was so caught off guard because the reveal at the end so i i also think that this one didn't have as many impactful moments in general but mm. the reveal i think was huge to me i was lo- i i was losing it so that's going to stick with me i think that would be my what's up danger plus i think the first movie had more um 
uh like mischief like g- mis- lighthearted gags like when he would like fall and it would like, say like ah like yeah. they only did that maybe once in this one like we didn't get like a bagel <laughs> we didn't get like the same sort of like comic-y stuff i thought the um adding the notations was really cool because they kept the comic elements it just mm-hmm. wasn't the same type mm-hmm. they had a lot of like the panel breaks too where it was like something is happening while it's being zoomed in on another part yeah. of the panel kind of thing. Yeah, um, and like the, there were more comic um, covers that like popped mm-hmm. up and stuff. But yeah. yeah, that would be my only my only reason for putting it at a .5 is because yeah, like, Spider-Verse was the right first up. one, and there's literally <laughs> no way to top the first one and mm-hmm. the first time. And I don't think they tried to do that. I think they honored the first one for what it was, and they didn't try to remake it they just continued on Mm -hmm. yeah that first in a new way let's make our universe and then just expand on that Mm -hmm. because we're going into the fucking spider-verse also i'm really excited to see that just means we get more more visual fantasticness more amazing voice actors more music more story Miles Prowler, we get all Thank of you. that shit. Thank you for saying it that way. In less Miles than a year. Prowler. I love Tails. God. Tails is great. <laughs> it's like I'm so yeah. I am because Spider Verse is like number one Marvel movie for me. It's the best, greatest Marvel movie of all time. It's my absolute favorite. So the fact mm-hmm. that I now have a trilogy of my absolute favorite, <laughs> I'm I'm living. Yeah. I'm so excited. Um, Nate, what did you say? Did you think it was yeah. better? Uh, I'm going to be the odd one out and sort of flip the assessment here. I do put the second movie slightly above the first one for me personally. I'll take it. Um, yeah. One, because there, there are two spider people that are my favorites. If you look at my collection of Spider-Man themed comics, there are two characters I've stuck with consistently. Gwen and Hobie. They are my two favorite spider people ever there is peter parker has his place miles has his place in that but the personal ways that gwen's story and hobie stories have impacted me they are my two favorites um hobie is a little bit above gwen because i I share a political perspective with him just being honest um but his presentation as being this unapologetic punk in this movie. All I, the the only thing I left the theater regretting at the time is I wish I got more of him in the movie. That's um, why there's a third one. That being said, I, I understand where you're coming from on the music and the impactful moments. What's up danger is a scene that will <laughs> go down in film history is probably one of the best scenes of all time. It is an amazing scene. It, the camera work in that scene to show you know in your head logically miles is falling but the way it's shot is upside down so he's rising to the mantle of spider-man his costume at the time is very hey i'm from brooklyn but i'm also spider-man um it's it's all wonderful in that scene that being said what i like most about this movie is the interactions between characters between Gwen and her dad, between Miles and his family, between Miles and the rest of the spider people, between Gwen and Miles, between Gwen and Hobie, between Gwen and the rest of the spider people, Miguel's absolute unhinged feralness as a (laughs) Spider-Man, who's also part vampire. Um, uh, And then the craziness of Earth-42 as you said, Miles Prowler. Um, I mean, that was more shocking to me in that moment than the to be continued at the end. Oh, wow. Um, really? Yeah, because it is, it, it was so unexpected for me. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, if they had ended it there, I would have been like, okay. <laughs> so, and, and I mean, we you'll say that Gwen doesn't have as much of a connection to music as Miles, but her thing is where Miles has this connection where he is a passive listener of music. Gwen creates music. 
We also, um, oh yeah, we skipped over and the so, helicopter scene. Well, we skipped over the helicopter scene, but also one thing of note here is at the very beginning of the movie, we open up with Gwen doing her drum solo. And then we end with that same drum solo playing in the background. Um, that this sort of musical motif is sort of Gwen's background music. Well, then I um, hope she goes back. I was blown when she quit. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> right um, after making me fall in love with her drum solos. Everyone loves the Mary Janes, and the Mary Janes should should be in a Spider-Verse movie. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, the helicopter scene, as Chris was saying, one, there's just a hilarious line in the helicopter scene. <laughs> um, I'm a good guy. You don't look like a good guy. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, just the, the fact that um, mm. the way that they have her taking in the, the environment and putting it to the rhythm of her drumming and stuff mm. for that, that scene. I, I did yeah. absolutely love that. Yes. And yeah, so... I would say there is definitely argument to be made that mm. Hobie's presence, period, makes this one better. <laughs> I could definitely get get with that argument. <laughs> Do you know what that is? Again, like you like you said, it it's like that point mm-hmm. five above that the original. But is. but see, like yeah. I could also be like, but Hobie makes that point five this way so yeah mm-hmm. that's why i was like they're right next to each other for me mm-hmm. wait till the third one God damn it yeah i mean we'll have to wait till the third one too then i'll make an ultimate decision <laughs> yeah i mean i i expect good things of the third one what if the third um, one's better than both of these <laughs> if the third one's better than both of these then i mean is like, that I possible know. i would implode in the theater <laughs> i i quit I quit reviewing movies for the rest of my my entire life if the third one happens to be I better am. than the other yeah. two. All right, so officially for the next for the last one, we all have to see it together. Like the first yeah. time we see it, um, all of us. Oh, okay, what? here's the thing. But are you guys gonna dress up or no? Am I gonna be the only one I'll, in a I'll spider costume? I'll dress up if I could find a pair of you know Jordans. I'll be I'll I'll Peter B it up. <laughs> okay. I'll we go. have to go as spider people. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, do I go as Peter B from the first one or the second one? Do I go with the pink robe or do I go with the sweatpants? How much is a pair of Jordan ones right now? Don't get Two. Jordan ones. That's so expensive. I mean, it's like two hundred some dollars. I'm gonna have to get a pair of Jordan ones. That's the only way to do it properly. <laughs> it's the first pair of no, Jordans no, no. I'll ever Hold buy. On. You're gonna go as as Miles and not Hobie. I mean, I could go as Hobie. You're right. Yeah, I kind of thought that was default. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, don't let me steal it because I'll do it. And I can't. Right. <laughs> let me let me write this down so I have it. Spider Punk <laughs> cosplay for the third movie. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm so confused right now. Ah, uh, the split second of me being like, why? <laughs> Uh, and end review end that review. was oh, perfect God. end oh okay um but yeah i, I think yeah there was one last two last things i wanted to mention one this will be literally it, just stupid little things uh one most of the music was done um throughout the movie by metro boomin um somebody that i'd never heard of uh, oh that's why that name has been floating around yeah. the twitter Two, on that, Metro Boomin is in the movie as a spider person. Um, he is the one that says, you don't have, there's nowhere to run when he's hanging upside down. He's like, my bad, there was somewhere to run. Um, <laughs> that is actually a spider, like a spider sonar specifically made for him. Um, and yes, yeah, spider sonas are a thing. They're like fursonas, but less weird. I saw uh, the <laughs> video of him watching the movie. Yeah, and they were like Metro Boomin watching his Spider Sona, and I was like, "Cool, who's that?" <laughs> yeah, I have never heard of this person before in my life. Um, it, it's okay, whatever. Uh, number two, which I didn't know and I didn't learn about until today, and I think I shared the whole thread of it. Um, Hobie was the original Prowler. Yeah, in the Marvel comics. What? Hobie, yeah, Hobie was the original Prowler. Yep, I'd buy it. Yeah. Um. At one point, they you know they changed That's things up, cool. and boom, he became uh, Spider Punk. 
Um, and mm-hmm. then obviously Aaron Davis took over as the ultimate version of uh, Prowler. So yeah, that's really it. Anything else? Any last thoughts? Any last fun things you want to mention before we get going? Amazing. 20 out of 10. Zero <laughs> notes. Zero notes. Zero notes. <laughs> Only note is thank you for making a third one. <laughs> yeah. Just just go see the fucking movie. I mean, keep it up. It, it, you, you, I'll put it this way like, even if you're not a fan of Spider Man, you're not a fan of comics. There is just so much to enjoy about these Spider-Verse movies that I think no one can walk away from them unhappy. I I went on Rotten Tomatoes and I looked at actual rotten reviews of the movies from critics and viewers. The viewer reviews are dumb and bullshit. It's stuff about, oh, well, there were kids in my theater and they were loud and whatever like that. Okay, well, you went to go see a fucking Spider-Man movie. What did you expect? Um, And then the critics reviews were like, Half the rotten movie. reviews were like too much of a good thing and half a movie. Yeah. And I'm like, what is wrong with in the times that we live too much of a good thing is not a phrase that should come out of anybody's mouth anymore. <laughs> um, no, there, there's so much to enjoy about these movies and, and I dare you to go watch it and tell me that you didn't enjoy it. All right. And I don't think we get movies that clearly love animations. <laughs> in yeah. that way anymore to uh, have so Puss many boots different year, from what I... i've heard puss and boots is up there really yeah yeah um, and... everything okay. i've seen from it i haven't seen it i have it to watch and i just haven't gotten around to it mm-hmm. um i the thing i heard I've the seen, story was surprisingly yeah deep <laughs> yeah, but visually um because uh, dreamworks kind of started this in more of their more recent movies uh i saw it in in bad guys which i absolutely love that i recommend that one um, cause they start changing up their animation style and you mm-hmm. really see that in Puss in Boots. Oh, um, okay. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Uh, what I want to say on the topic of, of the whole, you know, res- loving animation and respecting animation, um, everyone, like we both all have said now, go fucking see this movie so it can have a bigger box office than fucking Mario. <laughs> Get this above the $1. <laughs> $1.3 billion dollars. <laughs> Fuck Mario. Spider Verse. Spider Verse. <laughs> Spider Verse. Man, I just threw Mario all the way under the bus. Yeah, what? I did. And I or saw Mario. that too. I, I saw that Mario was the oh, thing it, that it was topped cute. it. Yeah. It's the, 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 two I mean, I didn't high, it. Oh. The, the two highest opening box office weekends so far of this year. And we're halfway through the fucking year. Is Mario at number one in Spider Verse mm-hmm. at number two? Um, so yeah keep going keep going buy a whole theater buy an entire theater out do it just do it for yourself you're the only one in the theater nobody else in the theater but like 80 tickets um just me and all my plushies came to see this movie (laughs) i it's like oh what it's me and all of the different variants they put out for miles morales for the the miles morales (laughs) game as a pop figure and i'll just put it in all the different seats Uh, (laughs) All right. Well, hey, thank you for joining us on this special, uh, you know, into the or across the Spider Verse spoiler cast. Um, if you want to see more of these, specifically the spoiler cast, you should come over to our patreon.com slash space time taco. Because uh, normally they are behind a wonderful little, it's a cheap paywall. We're, you know, yeah. it's like five bucks, I think. Um, <laughs> you get all that. Actually, it might be the, no, no, yeah, it's the five dollar one. Um, yeah, you get cheaper. access to a whole bunch of, you know, spoiler and unedited fun stuff that we do that won't get released on regular uh, stream streaming services. Cable. YouTube? Yeah, no cable. We're not on cable. Um, <laughs> uh, if you want to follow us all, uh, check us out on all social media at Space Time Taco. If you want to follow me, follow me everywhere at Time of Burrito. If you want to follow Nate. You can follow me on Instagram only and specifically at a little teapot 89 and if you want to follow leslie and you can follow leslie you can follow me at instagram i almost said at instagram dot kimono jones <laughs> <laughs> she's got the whole it. domain now Thinking it is her <laughs> yes. i own instagram um, I own Instagram. Kimono yes, I am Kimono, Kimono <laughs> Jones on Instagram. I am Kimono underscore Jones on Twitter. Yeah, until that burns down and is, you know, 
we eventually now, all yeah. migrate to Hive. I don't know. What's the alternative in the lead uh, right now? We're all going to Parlor. Oh, I can't off. go to. No. I can't. Get, I can't figure out TikTok. Oh yeah, Too TikTok's fast. a weird one. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, don't go inside and play video games. Go out to the theater and watch Spider Verse. <laughs>